Welcome to this program on electrical design analysis, short circuit calculation. This is one of the four topics under electrical design analysis offered by Fractal Knowledge that is applicable to residential, commercial, and industrial. We completed the first phase, the voltage drop calculation and analysis, and I hope you have added a skill as future electrical engineers. And in this module, I will discuss short circuit calculation. There's a lot of preparation for short circuit calculation. We will discuss those one by one and please take down notes if necessary. And here are the three remaining objectives we will tackle. To prepare short circuit analysis document, to ensure compliance to PEC Article 1.3.2.1 Paragraph F, DILG, DPWH, PESA, and DOLE Memoranda. Third is to do hands-on computation of short circuit calculation. I hope you are excited as we go along. Let's proceed. This is the base knowledge we need to know. Number one, we need to know the answer why short circuit calculation is needed. Second, we need to identify the sources of all current so that we can simplify all complex electrical system whatever kind of electrical system is it. Third, we need to know the common causes of short circuit so that during our electrical design analysis in actual client, we know the possible problems they need to avoid. Fourth, we will review the transient nature of short circuit so that it can help you to visualize how fast the short circuit happened. And fifth, we will use Excel for complex number formulas to make sure we can simplify the calculation of impedance a lot easier. Because impedance calculation is too long using manual calculation, with the help of Excel, we can shorten up our calculation process. Six, we will have a step-by-step -step requirements to follow to perform the short circuit calculation. I made a step easy for you to understand and follow. Seven, you will create a simplified, easy to follow impedance equivalent circuit diagram so that you can compute short circuit fault easy. Eight, we will discuss some reason why you need to use per unit calculation as required by the Board of Electrical Engineering and IEEE recommendation. Together with that, we will review basic Ohm's law to be used in short circuit. You will wonder why that short circuit calculation can be computed using Ohm's law per unit. And the only difficulty in short circuit calculation lies in the impedance simplification. There's a lot of requirements of or base knowledge we need to discuss so that your short circuit calculation will be easy. Let us watch all remaining module related to short circuit and I will guarantee that after learning those base knowledge, your skill will be enhanced so that you can prepare for short circuit calculation by yourself. See you in the next module. Previous discussion and calculation involve voltage drop calculation and analysis. Let me give you the base knowledge you need to know so that we can start short circuit calculation. Why short circuit calculation is needed? The first reason is to determine the ratings of equipment that can withstand the thermal and electromagnetic effect of short circuit current. The thermal effects of short circuit current heats up the conductor in relation to time and the square of the current. The electromagnetic effect, however, that occur on the one port cycle of the sinusoidal wave when the fault occur is the power of the fault which can bend buses and damage switch gears, even take away life. The second important reason why short circuit calculation is necessary to compute is that we want to determine the ratings of the protection of the equipment and we can adjust the settings of relays to properly select adequate protective devices. Out of that, we can know the ratings of protective equipment 
we can set release settings and we, we can study protection coordination. There's a lot of use in our startup of computing short circuit, okay? The third important reason why we calculate short circuit is to identify underrated protection devices before extensive damage can occur during fault condition. Because electrical system change over time, the need for short circuit calculation is necessary. The fourth reason is to provide personnel a safety data and values so that during your preventive maintenance and monitoring, you can prevent possible fire damage attributed to underrated protection. The bottom line why we compute short circuit boils down to safety to life and protection of property for those who use electricity which is under the responsibility and expertise of future engineers like you and me. Last, GE wrote in one of their white paper for fault calculation. GE emphasizes that when short circuit occurs in electric power system, several things happen. All of them is bad. Therefore, the need for short circuit calculation is important. You have no reason not to compute it. In the next step, we will review the sources of fault current. See you in the next chapter. Okay, we discussed the reason why short circuit calculation is necessary for you to learn. Now, let's discuss the sources of fault current. Here we will discuss the sources of fault current in an electrical circuit. This is useful in your simplification of your single line diagram where all you need to reflect are the sources of fault currents only, nothing more. Number one source is utilities. This is an incoming potential fault from utilities and it came from different sources of fault from generation to transmission and to distribution utility and you have to protect your system from it. This is the reason why we ask our utility provider with the fault duty values so that we can include it in our evaluation of our electrical system. The second source is from generators. You need to understand the response of your generator when fault happen. The transient characteristic of fault from zero to five cycle is important to understand. The third source is synchronous motor. This motor acts as a generator at an instant of a fault, thereby contributing fault current caused by the inertia of the load that drive the rotor. A DC current is present in the winding of a synchronous motor. So in the event of fault, the synchronous motor becomes a generator. The fourth source is an induction motors. The port source is an induction motor similar to what I mentioned about the synchro motors. The induction motor acts as a generator at an instant from 0 to 3 cycle of the sine wave. You may say, wala namang impact yan. If that's what you believe in, then you are not an electrical practitioner. If you have lots of induction motor in a given plant and when fault happens, you will wonder at an instant where those fault energy came from. It's so strong in a transient level, induction motors contribute a lot. Okay? The last one came from other sources. Therefore, knowing the four major sources of fault current in the electrical system gives you a hint that solving short circuit is not difficult. It was easy actually. This will help you to simplify your complicated single-line diagram, which most REE aspirant for PEE find it hard to start calculating short circuit. And since you are an engineering student with lots of uh, energy and uh, enthusiasm, you can do it. You can see from this figure, this point is an example of fault point. It can be located anywhere in your electrical system. It can be a panel or a uh, location in EE room. At the instant of a fault in this point, all the contributor of fault current will gather and travel 
and contribute to the total fault current at this point. This happened at a very fast instant of time. The damage created in the fire is just an effect of the fault. Therefore, the total impedance of the system that impede all the fault current contribution is needed to be determined at the fault point. We will go that later in our computation. I hope you learned something simple in a transient level. We will discuss further if we go to the sine wave analysis of fault current.